if you have that problem field, okay, let's just say soil's way out of balance, it's going to cost too much to um, try to get that back on track. Or maybe that's just not in the budget this year. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that field might be an opportunity for you to test foliar feeding, but of the nutrients you know you're going to be lacking. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because you know what? That's probably going to be your biggest ROI because they're not starving, but they would thrive a lot better if they had a little bit of those. And like we talked about earlier, you know, some micronutrients being one pound applied is the same as 10 pounds, you know, and I'm not saying all micros, you need 10 pounds of them. I mean, I actually argue the other side, but you're stimulating in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of the, the rates that you see are, and you know, I, I don't want to be anti, uh, fertilizer or anything here, but a lot of the rates we're using, even with nitrogen are just ridiculous. They're, they're excessive. And the reason we have to use these rates is because of all those interactions. Yeah. So, I mean, you could cut these rates down by adding a little bit of labor to it, maybe an additional pass, the right placement, the right chelate, maybe adding some of your carbon to it, something like this, yep. and you're going to get much more efficiency out of it. That's one of the reasons every single farmer asks me the efficiency factor of whatever it is I have that day. You know, maybe it's the amino acid. Well, you know, in some cases, this fish amino is literally 10 pounds of urea. One pound of this 15 yep. one 10 pounds of urea. But in other cases, it doesn't respond like that. It's because of the balance across the board. It's a trick question for me to answer your question and say this replaces 10 quarts of zinc, you know, because it's not always the zinc, you know. Is it the phosphorus? Is it the calcium affecting the phosphorus affecting the zinc? You know, is it the fungi in the soil that are now rotating? Is it this bacteria species that's eating it all up? Bacteria are, they're like bags of fertilizer. <laughs> that's so a good way to put you it. You need yeah. something to eat the bacteria. Some, and if, some to pull the string on the bag uh, so you can dump it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. there's so many interactions to deal with when we're trying to calculate your nutrient budgets. It's unreal. Yeah. Well, and- I know I've said this so many times, tensionality, balance, that's, that there will probably guide you to the products you need to get. Yeah. And then like, there are good, I, I know today there are some good university guys out there doing really good work, you know, and if we stand on their shoulders, you know, like the, uh, the Illinois guys, they've right there in that paper and they've summarized this paper a thousand times at a thousand different websites every company has picked up this paper and tried to explain it in their benefit so we can just look at that and we know at certain times we need certain nutrients and then you know oh boy you got potassium through the roof so you're never going to be able to get the magnesium so then now we can even further it now we know we need magnesium at this time we know that Oh, calcium's going to work in this field, boron's going to work in this field, and molybdenum's going to work in this field. But we know, we know mag's not going to work here. So now you know to foliar apply that mag at that timing. And then the irrigation guys, my friend John calls it the $1,000 button. That's... (laughs) I yeah, didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize that. You know, I figured a pivot was just like a free pass around the field. Yeah. It's yeah. like Rob, it's a thousand dollar button. Yeah. And he's right. He's right. Yeah. But so, but we know to press the thousand dollar button with the mag because we have to go a quick pass to get that out of the and avoid the ocean. Yes. Yes. So I know I just mentioned molybdenum. Why does everybody hate molybdenum? Why is it not on any test? I, oh, you're talking about it from the lab's perspective. What? What's I'm wrong with molybdenum? I, I don't know. Molybdenum's a great tool. Yes, And it is. I find it deficient in a lot of agricultural soils. Yes. And you need nothing. You need, like, such a tiny, tiny bit. Well, and it's so unique, too, with mo- molybdenum, how it's almost like the inverse. The more acidic, the more available it is. Yeah, yeah, you I know, like it. You I know, like once it, you yeah. cross over, the closer you get to six, five, seven, it actually starts, uh, its availability starts getting lower, too. You know what else, then? This, I, I hate, you know, boy, we got to watch because we can go on forever in so many different rat holes, but it reminds me of silica. 
Okay. Uh, so silica, you know, it's everywhere, but not a drop to share. And <laughs> uh, so this is where, and another well, thing. Real quick, silica is the second most abundant element actually in the soil, though, correct? Uh, or silica, like that? it depends on the pH. Okay, but okay. Yeah, yeah. silica, it, it's in the top three every time. Okay. Yeah, aluminum too. Aluminum's yeah. everywhere. It's just controlled by pH. I mean, I from a practical standpoint, calcium is absolutely everywhere. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever see calcium deficiency, <laughs> but I never have it. In, I always see calcium deficiency, but it's never deficient on the test. Yes, th- and, that's a great way to put it. There's been like two counties maybe where <laughs> I've seen. Uh, but oh, so this is, I, I said another a bad word earlier, uh, stoichiometry. And it's how the molecules are balancing. Yep. And it's, you know, that's serious, like chemistry 101 that we all like must have cheated on that test (laughs) and so that's off out of the question but there's another thing from that class that i had to learn more recently and it's pka so there's the ph the poh and each salt or molecule has this uh, equilibrium point basically called its pka and it that's where the you're going to have some problems in terms of its availability so silica is a pain you know, to really solubilize it and work with it. We started working with it now three years ago, and we've been trying to, well, we've made a liquid, we've made a granular, um, we mix it with other things. But your problem with silica, I can completely make monosilicic acid, the, the active of silica, under pH 6. And I can very easily make it again over pH like 8.2, Okay. Right? Like on this side of the world. But in that six to eight range, it crashes out of every solution. <laughs> you know? So it's, cre- it's oh boy, what a, I'm not a chemist, you know, I'm a field guy. And uh, so that's taken the chemist a lot of development work to just keep it in that suspension or, or that true solution at biological pH. Okay. Oh, anyway, but huh. similar with molybdenum. So you'll find like toxic levels at one pH, but if you can adjust the pH, you're suddenly in a sweet spot. And then if you go too far over, you're suddenly in another level where it's it's either missing okay. or toxic altogether. Okay. Not to get too crazy about it. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, we covered FOSS. I think the title was phosphorus, and now yeah. we've discussed all seventeen essentials. And oh, I don't know if it was three all more se- and seventeen, but we definitely hit most of them. Um, but I think in all cases, um, and I know, I mean, we can argue uh, what's chelatable and what's not, uh, and some things you probably don't need it. You know, we're not chelating nitrogen, but I, I think it's a good idea to you know to use. A lot of these carbon sources, I think they're real easy ways for farmers, really uh, cost-effective ways for yep. farmers yep. to protect the interactions between some of all these nutrients and make things just work better all the time. Yeah. Not that there's a simple answer to anything, but... Well, and I think it goes back to balance and intentionality gets a person very far at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. You know? and, and look at the plants. Yeah. I mean, I'm going nuts with some of these tests now and every I love it. I'm a scientist, right? Yep. So I like data. But, you know, the the report tells you nothing. The plant tells you everything and then the report explains what the plant just told you. So tests in these vacuums are are absurd. <laughs> so well, objective, objective, objective. objective. <laughs> Well, Robert, I just want to share with you how appreciative I I am for you to coming back onto the podcast and and diving into, like I said, a little deeper dive on FOSS because there's there's a lot of stuff out there, um, a lot of topics we covered that I feel like it was just nice to get a perspective from from two ad guys, uh, two science Absolutely. ad guys. Um, no, I appreciate the invite and always being welcome back. I I think the singular team and the ag America team have a lot of strong synergies. Yes. And I look forward to just, I don't know, spreading as much information as we can to the market as possible. Awesome. I think we're a good team for that. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, uh, if you want to catch anything, we have the product videos that will be coming out on YouTube. Yeah, I can't um, wait. Josh came in, uh, talked more. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to listen to your two's podcast cause I actually get to consume it. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm ready for that. Um, but again, thank you so much. Uh, see us on YouTube. If you're interested in products, uh, check out the, check out the website and we would love to get you connected. So absolutely. Yes. Thank you all very much. 
We look forward to getting in your fields. <laughs> Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.